In this video, I wanna show you what the number one scam is that a lot of HVAC companies are doing this time of year around fall time. And then we're gonna show you how you can verify for yourself. And if anything else, just having this knowledge and knowing how to talk to the HVAC technicians and just tell if they're lying through their teeth is very valuable. So with that, let's jump right into it. Today's video is brought to you by Alpine Home Air, America's number one choice for quality, affordable DIY HVAC equipment. Okay, so here's the scam. A lot of HVAC companies, especially these really big ones, do these promotions where they say, we'll do a free tune-up or a tune-up for like 20 bucks. And the reality is they're getting into your home to sell you on something. They're gonna find something. And a lot of times it is your heat exchanger. Now the heat exchanger is what allows hot flames to go through and then the air blows over that heat exchanger allowing you to get hot air or warm air into your home. Now the problem is no furnace is going to be 100% efficient. There's always going to be carbon monoxide or unburnt fumes that is going to escape. And a furnace has a motor that pulls those fumes out. Now here's what can happen is eventually over time your heat exchanger can crack but a lot of HVAC technicians will say that you have a crack in the heat exchanger when you really don't and here's why. A lot of those technicians are commission based so if they go into a home that they're just doing a tune up on and they find a bad heat exchanger and get you to replace it with a new furnace they make money off of every single one of those that they do. Now we're talking about thousands of dollars here. In fact, last week I actually had a guy call me from YouTube and he said we had a large company come out and do one of these cheap tune-ups and sure enough, they said you have a cracked heat exchanger and guess how much they wanted to charge this man for a standard efficiency, no bells and whistles furnace, $7,500 just for the furnace. Absolute absurdity. So this knowledge I'm about to share with you can be worth thousands of dollars. So make sure and watch till the end of this video. Okay, so here's the furnace that we're gonna be demonstrating on. This is obviously out of the home and a very temporary setup. We just have a temporary gas line and our electrical connected here. But we're gonna show you how this gas furnace should turn on, what you can expect when your gas furnace comes on. And then we're going to duplicate a cracked heat exchanger and show you how you can test to see if it does have a crack. And then if you're still uncertain, we're gonna show you some other measures you can take to test if you have a cracked heat exchanger. So for starters, we're going to bump this into heating mode. So we have the R and the W jumped here. So that's gonna signify as if you went to your thermostat and put it in heating mode. So all we have to do now is just jump this switch here. And a little trick is you can take a zip screw and run it in right here and that will keep this switch closed just like that okay so our blower motor is going to come on first and run for about 60 seconds and then the inducer will come on so some furnaces don't have this feature but this furnace does like a self-test to make sure that the blower motor is working before any of the combustion stuff turns on which is pretty nice but a lot of times you don't have this the um, gas portion will immediately start the inducer will start and then once everything is fired up, then after about 30 seconds, our blower will turn on. So we'll notice here in just a second, the blower will turn off and immediately after our inducer will turn on. Now this is the motor that's gonna be pulling your exhaust air out of the heat exchanger. And while this is running, I just wanna show you what the heat exchanger looks like. So it's just this right here. And those flames are gonna go through there and it's gonna get sucked through the heat exchanger and it's gonna spit out the exhaust right here. Okay, so our blower turned off, inducer motor is on, so it's actively pushing air out of here. And this right here is where you would vent to the exterior of your home. So we see our hot surface igniter there, that will um, glow cherry red, get really hot. And then when it sends the gas through the gas valve, that is what's going to ignite it. There we go. So we have gas and ignition, and that is exactly what you want. You wanna have nice blue flames. That's your first indicator that you have a cracked heat exchanger. If you see orange in the flames, that's a good indicator that you're getting oxygen in there and it's going to cause an orange flame. Now here's the next test. You wanna wait until your blower motor comes on and when your blower motor is starting right now, you wanna make sure that there's no orange flames when the blower motor comes on. See how nothing changed here? 
that flame is still nice and blue even after the blower motor just come on but if your blower motor comes on and that's when you see orange flames that's also a good indicator that you have a crack in the heat exchanger because as you can see when there's flames running through here and the air starts blowing through that air is actually going to seep into the heat exchanger and that's what's going to cause that orange flame okay so now that you've seen how this properly works i'm just going to turn the gas valve off and let that heat exchanger cool a little bit okay so something that a lot of people don't realize is that where the inducer motor is located regardless of if you have an 80 percent furnace or a 96 percent is this is attached to that heat exchanger up here. And let me explain this a little bit further. So if you have an 80% furnace, you will not have PVC venting like this. You'll see a big metal vent, like a four inch flexible vent or rigid vent coming out the top. That just means that you have a standard efficiency furnace, meaning you are gonna burn 80% of the fuel that's sent in here. 20% is going to be pulled out by the inducer motor and it goes out of that metal vent. This is considered a high efficiency. That's why it has PVC venting. It's pulling out 96% of this fuel that is, is being burnt and it's pulling out about 4%. That's what goes out the exhaust. Now, this heat exchanger, where those flames go into the heat exchanger is all attached. So it goes through this first heat exchanger, then it goes through the secondary, which condenses water. It's pulling out so much heat that it condenses, and then it's getting sucked through the, the inducer and out. So this is what a lot of people don't realize, is if you have a crack here in the heat exchanger, this carbon monoxide, a lot of times, if not majority of the times, is not escaping the heat exchanger. It's actually being sucked through the heat exchanger, so it's actually gonna be pulling this air into the heat exchanger and then sending it outside. So a lot of HVAC contractors will make this sound like it's a life or death thing and it requires immediate action. Like you have to replace this. We're gonna turn the gas furnace off and you can't turn it back on unless an HVAC guy comes and does it. And they really scare people into replacing their furnaces for an exorbitant amount of money. And it's really sad, but the whole purpose of this video is just to inform you of what to look for if your heat exchanger is really cracked and how to identify if it's not cracked. Okay, so our first test just involved checking that flame as the blower motor comes on to make sure there's no orange. The second test is going to involve a matchstick like this one. So what we're gonna do is light this and just demonstrate what we're gonna do during this test. So we have our matchstick lit here. And now what we're gonna do is just put this into the heat exchanger and you can see that flame is not moving whatsoever. Now, if we hold it in there for too long, it's going to try and snuff out because there's, it's not able to get enough oxygen. So if you let it kind of re-light here. Now we're gonna go over to the second one and show you the same thing. So we want a, a flame like that. We don't want any movement. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, if we put this in the heat exchanger and it's just fluttering everywhere, that means that there is disturbance in the heat exchanger from the blower motor. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to turn the blower motor on and do this same test. So we don't need to activate anything with the uh, combustion side. So all we're gonna do here is we're gonna jump the R terminal and the G terminal, or if this was in your home, all you would need to do is go to the thermostat and just put your fan in the on position. So we're gonna do the same test here. You can see right here how much it's gonna be fluttering because of this return air. But once we put this in the heat exchanger, notice how it's just straight up. There's a little bit, that, but that's going straight. You're gonna really be able to tell if there's a lot of fluttering. Same here, it's just going straight up. And that's exactly what you want. Now what we're gonna do is demonstrate a crack in the heat exchanger and show you what results you might get if you do indeed have a crack. Okay, so before we create a crack in the heat exchanger and do these tests again, I wanna show you this last trick that you can do. This is a manometer. This is very cheap on Amazon. And what it does is it reads pressures in different forms. So inches water column is exactly what we're after. 
And as we talked about before, the inducer, its job is to pull out fumes from here. And these are called pressure switches right here. And their job is to say, okay, this is pulling enough vacuum out that we can proceed with the combustion process. And as we discussed before, the air that's coming through here from the return that's blowing through your home is totally isolated from the heat exchanger. So this test involves hooking up our manometer to this side of the system, turning the blower on and seeing if there's any pressure reading on our gauge. So what we're gonna do is take off this hose that goes to the collector box here. That should only have pressure when this is spinning. If this is not spinning, you should not have any pressure here. And we're gonna connect our manometer here and then turn our blower on and see if this has any movement. All right guys, so we've got our blower motor turned on. We have this connected to our manometer. And as you can see, we have zero. Nothing is reading on here. So once we start, uh, once we create a hole in the, in the heat exchanger, this number should change once we turn the blower motor on again and redo this test. All right, so we've created a decent sized crack in the heat exchanger. That's typically where they end up is on these bends here. So we've created a little incision there and we're basically just gonna redo these two tests. Okay, so now that we have the hole in the heat exchanger, check this out. So when we put it over to here, Notice how that flame is just dancing all over the place. But watch this, when I put it in the other one, straight up and down. So that conclusively tells if you have a crack in your heat exchanger. See how that's fluttering around? That's exactly what you'll see if you have a crack in the heat exchanger. Okay, so test number two, now that we have a crack in the heat exchanger, check this out. So we're reading zero inches water column. As Soon as we attach this, we have movement. It's very minimal, 0.12 inches of water column, but we do have movement when we connect this when we shouldn't. Before we were reading zero. So again, this proves conclusively that we do have a crack in the heat exchanger with this method. Now my purpose of this video is not to minimize what the dangers of carbon monoxide are. It is a real actual thing. They call it the silent killer and it's nothing to be joking about, but I want to just inform you so that you know how you can check and verify that you and your family are safe. Now two critical things that are involved here that I wanna mention is a carbon monoxide detector and you can even get this with smoke and carbon monoxide and then a handheld carbon monoxide detector this will tell without any uncertainty, and both of these really will, but this is a handheld device that we can put up to something and it will immediately tell you if there's carbon monoxide and how many parts per million. So I wanna demonstrate this real quick, as well as show you some features of this X-Sense carbon monoxide detector. So this is a Klein ET110 carbon monoxide detector, and this is about $120. You can get cheaper ones, but for something that's as critical as carbon monoxide, I really would emphasize getting one that is nicer like this Klein uh, device right here. So I'm gonna demonstrate how this works and what you can expect if you get a carbon monoxide detector like this one. All right, so we've got our carbon monoxide detector here. It does a little countdown to calibrate the sensor up top. Our hot surface igniter is on right here. And I just wanna demonstrate this, how you will immediately sense carbon monoxide. This again is the tube that would go outside to the exterior of your home. And notice as soon as our flames come on, boom, we have 450 parts per million. So this will alert you and immediately, as soon as you get away from it, it will slowly beep until we get down to a safe level. So even anything above nine parts per million, you're gonna get a yellow flash here. Now the blower motor just came on and I want you to check this out. So we're right here next to the heat exchanger where supposedly it's sending carbon monoxide out and notice what this is reading literally right next to it. Zero parts per million. Oh, 
hovering right next to it and we get nothing. So this emphasizes that the heat exchanger is under a vacuum. So the inducer is pulling that flame through and it's not allowing any carbon monoxide to escape. You have to have a massive, massive crack in order for that to happen. So I thought I'd just show you this. This is not something that you typically see, but I wanted to show you how this actually works and on an active crack on a heat exchanger, what you can expect. Now, just for giggles right here, I wanna show this same thing. We're right here where the gas is being sent out. And because this is on a vacuum, because the inducer is pulling it out of the heat exchanger, we're not gonna get any readings here. Okay, so now that you've seen how the Klein carbon monoxide handheld tool works, this is the Xsense that I keep in my home, in my garage as well, this is the same one. And the reason why I love this is that it has a digital readout right here. So if there's anything present, it's going to show up, even if it's below the minimum amount that is dangerous. So you can detect anything before it even becomes high enough to make this thing beep. Well guys, it's that easy to check to verify if you have a cracked heat exchanger. Again, I'm not minimizing carbon monoxide at all. If you don't feel comfortable doing any of these things that we've shown in this video, call a professional and have them check it out. I just wanna give you my opinion. And bottom line, just make sure that you have good working carbon monoxide detectors. This is the one I recommend and I'll leave it in the video description as well as a link up here. But if you wanna see a more in-depth video on carbon monoxide detectors and best practices like where to place them, where to not place them, check out this video right here and we go into more depth on that. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.